All right, today I'm showing off the Casio TW7000 Titanium. Uh, now, don't be fooled. That only means that the head is titanium, but the bracelet is stainless steel. I actually think this is a great idea. I've had many all-titanium watches with no coatings, and the bracelets just get scratched so easily that it makes sense to either get them coated or have the bracelet be stainless steel. I have uh, MRGs that have had no coatings that I mean really you just brush up against something and you get a gigantic scratch. Some with a non-DLC coating that still gets scratched and DLC coating so far has been pretty good. Um, I've set up a five minute timer for three watches the TW7000 GW5000 and an MRG 8100B. First the 8100, then the GW5000, then the TW will beep so you can hear the difference in sounds. And one thing about vintage Casios and G-Shocks is they're easier for the for button presses and they're always louder. All right, so let me get into the watch. You've got three functions in this watch the time, stopwatch, the timer which is currently running, and the alarm. And you only have one alarm. Very easy to adjust throughout. Um, this module beeps at the half hour, the hour, and at 12 a.m. It, it does like a longer beep. So that's kind of interesting, but it doesn't beep in between modes. Uh, so the bracelet, as I said, is stainless steel. One thing that is awesome is how many micro adjustments Casio made on this. It's got six by my count. My MRG only has three, and it really does make a difference in, in getting that like perfect fit. Uh, another thing is, and I hate that Casio doesn't make watches like this anymore, if you want to put a leather strap on this from a, from the jewelry store or, a, I don't know, a silicone strap, you can put it as long as it's the right size. It'll take it. You don't need, like, adapters or any of that like you do on G-Shocks now. I think that's a major mistake, especially on the bracelet watches, because once you break a bracelet, if you can only put the same exact bracelet and the watch is, like, 30 years old, then you're probably not going to have any luck or you're going to have to pay a lot of money. So let me show you the case back. Uh, it is titanium. As someone said on the forums, they just don't make the watches like they used to, and that's correct. Now I'm going to show you a side-by-side -side with a GW5000 just so you can see the size difference. And I think it's, you know, it's the GW5000 is huge, and... Here I don't have any resin on it. It's just a straight case. So you can see it's a it's a it's a little watch and and I'm not on board with the current trend of humongous watches. I liked I like them small. I think they should easily fit under a cuff if you need it to. So I mean, as you can see, it's not only thicker but it's more it's bigger. And to some extent that probably has to do with uh, making it more shock resistant and and I'm all on board for that um, this is a 1984 watch so it's 29 years old and with vintage watches they always had uh, light bulbs this one is actually pretty good uh, let me turn off the light real quick I mean it's it's pretty pretty bright I would say the this watch is is in pretty good condition it does have a couple scratches here and there inside the module and I don't think you'll see it but around here it has there goes the MRG there goes the GW5000 and there goes the TW7000. 
clearly the TW7000 is much louder than all the other watches. I don't know why Casio doesn't make them like that anymore. Maybe it's because the batteries just uh, will die a lot. I'm not sure, but the other ones are both solar, so they should technically last 10, 15 years. Um, so I think that was a good, you know, show and tell of the difference between then and now. I mean, it's not to say my MRG or my GW5000 aren't good watches. They're just not... This... It, it it should be louder, I think, and the buttons should be easier to press. So here's the light on this one. Here's the light on this one. Obviously, the newer ones have better lights. But with this older one, I can leave it pressed here a minute if I want to, and it'll still be lit up, which is nice. The GW5000, it'll turn off after, I think it's like a second and a half or two seconds. And obviously the MRG doesn't have a light. It does have loom, which you can kind of see. Let me see if I can. So that's pretty cool. So here's another comparison of size. I mean, just look at the 8100. It's a freaking beast compared to this. But the 8100 is actually, uh, it's not that thick. Uh, I was very impressed with this watch how easily it fits under a shirt etc um, so that's pretty much it if you guys have any questions feel free to ask oh yeah let me show you the packaging because uh, I actually got it new old stock which was very interesting here is the box that it comes in and it comes in a stand which you have to like take it apart from the bottom very cool it also came with a manual this is a module 548 and I think this is I thought it was in Spanish but I guess not so that's pretty nice you know it came with all the packaging this is the outer box and how do I know it's from this model well because it still has the freaking tag on it there and there it took me eight months to find this watch. Literally searching uh, Yahoo Auctions Japan, eBay forums. I found it in October. It was going for three sixty nine. Oh, let me say this: there's three versions. This one, a version with a white dial and a version with a strap. The version with the white dial was selling for like three, like high three hundreds, and it got canceled. So I didn't get it, and then this popped up, and I went all out on it. I wasn't going to lose it. I'm glad I didn't. It's a very awesome watch, and, uh, and I'm very pleased with it. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. And I hope you like this review of this 1984 Casio TW7000. Thank you.